Okay. We're live already, so good evening. Uh, welcome to the April 14th meeting of the Northampton Planning Board. Um, there's no one here, so we can assume there's no public comment. Um, the uh, first thing on our agenda is the bicycle ped plan. Um, Wayne's not here yet, so we'll read uh, orders. Thanks, sorry. Do you want to cover the minutes? <laughs> cover the minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, John moved for approval of the minutes and seconded it. All in favor? Unanimous. Um, okay. I have a bunch of ANRs, and then I can do the FFR changes and URA stuff. But um, fields, fruits, and rivers. What is FFR? Um, I'll show you. So, um, so. Um, when we, we had this conversation about, um, I have some maps, yay, um, about changing, doing the map changes for URA and looking at um, sort of pushing those districts to either B or maybe down zoning to suburban residential, in some cases keeping them mm -hmm. or waiting. Um, so they weren't, so was that? That discussion we had, so they weren't like so, like, like it was like big clump, right? Yeah, right, yeah. okay. Random. Um, so we, um, <coughs> then as part of that conversation, um, there were also parcels that made sense to that were parks that should go to farms, forest, and river. Which right now, the zone is used primarily for city open space parcels, the ones that the city owns, not any of the ones that have conservation restrictions or anything, but they're city um, um, owned parcels. So what we've done, th this map, this is just sort of an update because we're not quite ready to submit um, the URA piece, but we can move forward with that farms, forests, and rivers piece, which I think strategically you all wanted to do first to show how um, the relationship um, sort of highlights um, the boundaries of urban residential A and how maybe they meet, make even less sense um, when you throw the FFR or parks in. Mm -hmm. I, just to clarify perhaps what is obvious to everyone else, so farms, Field and forest and forest field and rivers. Right. But parks is part of that. Well, so up until not until this change. So what's in front of you? So then I also have a quick. Um, I don't have enough copies for everyone, so you guys can maybe <coughs> share a couple of copies of um, the text change that would go along with it. So we were concerned. So currently, farms, forests, and rivers only city protected open space. Not um, yeah, that's one. That's another copy. Not um, parks or schools or anything else that really won't be developed, but it's still zoned as though it could be developed. So for instance, Child's Park was an example of a park that is also a zoned urban residential A. So if you just look at the map and say, wow, I've got this big parcel here, it's URA, but in fact, it's a park. So, and it, and for all intents and purposes, it's um, deeded as a park and it won't be changed for um, development purposes. I have somehow, I got um, not quite enough copies of these, but, so the other piece of these out and I'll share with them. Okay. The other piece of that is to, that um, as part of this farms, forests, and rivers, which is intended, it, it, farms, forests, and rivers originally was dedicated to or allocated for parcels where we thought we could um, um, use Excuse the transfer. Is that a zoning plans. district? Yes. So. Um, used for what? Used as a as a, a a receiving zone. I'm sorry, I got that backwards. Um, in relation to transfer of development rights, where we would allocate a place to be farms, forests, and rivers, and we would transfer the development rights off that parcel to an in-town location, so that that would help um, cover, um, you know, offset the property owner's um, investment by allowing those development rights to go elsewhere in the city. We never really, that never really took off. It's a comp, transfer of development rights is really complicated. So we're sort of reorganizing what farms, forests, and rivers is, knowing that 
these are special pieces of property that we want to permanently protect. So we've started with just city-owned property, and maybe at some later time we'd look at different parcels. Um, but this exercise is um, shows in yellow, in green, the existing farms, forests, and rivers properties, which are owned by the city, um, mostly held by the Conservation Commission. Um, the blue is, are, is either water or special conservancy district, so floodplain. So that's why the whole uh, meadow section is blue. It's not that it's, well, the river is there sometimes when it floods, but not most of the time. Um, and then the yellow represents parcels that have either, that, that we're proposing to transfer into farms, forests, and rivers, either because they've been purchased as open space since the last time we made a farms, forests, and rivers map change, or they fall into the category of other city-owned properties that won't be developed, but we want to take them out of um, we want to just show more truthfully that they're not intended to be developed because we'll take them out of a URA or URB zone, this knowing parks, parks right. and school properties and things like, and, and fields, so recreation fields. So, um, so Child's Park in the middle, right. right in URA, the big yellow triangle right, so would, would be green in the... Even though it's not city owned, right. it's a park. <coughs> Forever going to stay a park. Confused. Farm, forest, and rivers is what relationship to park? It's permanently protected open space. But is a park part of form fo farm, forest, or river? It is now. <laughs> I mean, parks can park. <coughs> park means different things to different people. We originally it it was a designation for areas that were completely pristine and undeveloped, and which we wanted to protect. Um, and so we've expanded the types of land that would fall under that category, um, but we've only done that with city-owned parcels. So um, it used to be there were only, I think, one or two parcels in the city that were zoned that way, as again, as um, sending zones for development rights. And um, a few years ago, maybe eight years ago, uh, we started the process of putting, remapping all the conservation land that was owned by the city to farms, forests, and rivers just to show that it wasn't up for development anymore because even though we purchased the properties, they were still zoned in whatever district they were um, located. Did you ever do any of the sending swaps? No, and the first, the, the one we thought where it would happen would be around the state hospital, and then we just, there was so much development at the state hospital anyway, when, once the plans got approved. I mean, this goes way back to before we had a plan for, villa, for the state hospital. So. Um, I assume the red is what you want to change it to. Right, so the text in front of you would go along with the maps, because of the, if you recall the conversation, we wanted to, we were looking at Look Park and changing that out of URA because that's never going to be developed for residential. So put that into FFR, but there are other activities that happen at Look Park and some of these other non-city owned open spaces or parks that we want to make sure we're not excluding from allowed uses. And so the red text um, identifies. So that's why you have the provision that it could be a non-profit as well as government owned. Right, okay. right. And that you could have banquet halls or entertainment venues like what happens at Look Park. Um, and then we also added, which we haven't had before, um, is uh, a caretaker's residence opportunity at any one of these sites. So um, I think actually there used to be someone at Look Park that would, you know, the um, director would mm -hmm. would live on site, and then there might that might come up in other on other occasions too. You know, at oh, the boathouse or something like that. Oh, it's okay. Just just allows it to happen. It's still it's not a violation of the zoning to have one residence on site because typically these are not residential properties. Right. So uh, I'm a little cautious about the uh, caretaker living there. So I, I mow my yard. Am I a caretaker? You know, can I, could I pull that? Is there any way for me to get a, 
piece of this property and build on it and say I'm a caretaker? Um, what property? These that we're talking about. The well, no, because they're owned yeah, by the city. Yeah. Right. So these aren't, this, this isn't, the map change isn't going to, um, doesn't include private property. property ownership other than these nonprofits that own the What about? Parks, like Wait, park so a nonprofit you're assuming will never change hands? The land of a nonprofit will never change hands? No, but if it's permanent, if it's restricted by deed to be that, Thing, child's Park or recreation field. So we've we have recreation fields that have been acquired and take an act of the legislature to convert out. Right. So I, I'm I know it's an unusual case, but I mean I just could see over the future that a, a piece of a nonprofit turns this over and somebody reads this in and says, Well a caretaker's house can go on this property, I'll be a caretaker. Um I think that you know, then you'd have to show that your your function there is to um, oversee the premises and make sure you're taking care of it as opposed to just living there. And that's it, your would job. Be, it would still have to be open space with limitations on what you could do with it. Right, right. But it might be a really nice house. <laughs> <laughs> and residential location, location, location. So Child's Park's the only one that's a nonprofit now because Look Park's owned by the city. Um, no. The land is owned by the city, city. but it's run by okay. Okay. All right. trustees. So, and it has a caretaker house on it, but doesn't. I don't think anybody lives there. <coughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. But Child's Park, then the idea is to be stricter. So one, even if someone snuck in and did a caretaker home, it's still less than if it was developed as U or B or U or C or right. A. But yeah, I guess, I guess the other. And you couldn't chop it up into right. multiple lots. Right. Still, it would be one residence on the entire park. I guess I kind of have a little bit, of, and I know, I'll, you know, again, this could, you know, would have to change hands, whatever, but I guess I would be concerned, just because we've had, you know, some organizations come before, <coughs> like civic groups and stuff, where they're doing things and neighbors aren't thrilled about it. I mean, could a nonprofit, could it change hands and then, you know, say, like Child's Park, and I know this is not probably not a great example, it doesn't have a banquet hall or an entertainment venue or a concession stand, or, but what if it changed hands? Could it have all those things? And all of a sudden now you've got neighbors all around saying, hey, wait a minute, you're running, you know, an entertainment business or, you know, I mean. Well, they do I have, that, you know, they I do think, have events there. They have weddings. So. But they don't have a concession stand or an entertainment, you know, and I guess that's the thing. Could it change hands and then it, yeah. and then it becomes like another look park or, or something yeah. like that? I guess that's the. Or if they're like the. You know, a Delaney House type thing. Right. Built a, you know, a, a, um, a banquet hall facility in the middle of Child's Park, and they had functions every weekend and a, and a, adjoining, you know, conference space or whatever it is. Yeah. And just just to take the worst example, is that is that allowed? I think it is technically possible, but isn't I guess, to me, maybe that's a better solution mm -hmm. than it being divided up into 20 homes. So no argument, but how? But the neighbors might say there's only one solution, which is keeping it. Right, but so only we can't do that. Mm -hmm. So our choice is really keeping it the same or making it right. an open space use. Yes. And there's other mechanisms, I don't know anything about the will of right. you know, whoever did it. Maybe right. it can convert anyway. But. What is a community facility? Um, that's defined in the city ordinance as um, as um, uses like um, you know uh, recreation center or um, like the senior center is a community facility. Um, so it's a defined or term in the ordinance. Yes. And forums. Would that be a? Uh, yes. Okay. So what if that was in Child's Park? I don't know. Or an indoor soccer arena. Do you, think this, do you think that this permits mm. the Child's Park people to build this stuff in Child's Park? Well, the caretaker residents, um, I think if they were going to do a banquet hall, um, 
or a concession stand, they'd probably have to construct a building for that because the only building there is that small, I mean, they're pretty small. So to really become a banquet hall, they would have to build. So anything over 2,000 square feet still comes before the planning board for site plan approval. Um, but yes, it would allow them to come before the board for that. <coughs> But if they want to, to, so the garden house at Little Park is, how we classify that? <coughs> Community center? Yeah. Wh whatever that's, that's classified is. as yeah. is allowed Phoenix already on the site. Because yeah. we allow that in all districts. Right? We allow that in all districts? Because um, the garden house has it, check. and that's what the old Florence Grammar School is. Those are the two that we have at that time. Right. right. So I think they could do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, instead of a site plan for anything over 2,000 feet, could you do a special permit? So that if, again, somebody in the middle of Child's Park, in the middle of the biggest open field, wanted to build a giant indoor soccer, tennis, swimming arena and call it a community center, but it's a for-profit and traffic is up and the neighbors hate it and all that stuff, right now does this prevent that from happening or is that? Well, it's allowed by right. So if you think that makes sense for new <coughs> new venues, I mean, you could require a special permit for that. But you'd have to, somehow or another, they'd have to be able to, to build it within whatever restrictions you, you couldn't special permit it right out of existence, could you? Sure, yeah. if, if for a certain location it didn't make sense or they couldn't um, address impacts to the neighborhood in some way, um, then you could say, no, this is not the right place for an indoor soccer right. arena. I mean, I Go don't expect any of this to happen. And certainly it's better the way it's proposed than to chop it up into different lots. I'm just trying to think of the worst case scenario. Right. And I want to confirm that Charles Park is the only non-city owned yellow area we're looking at. Yeah, so Look Park's a little weird. The main part of Look Park is owned by the city. That's the part is given by Fanny Look and managed by the self preservation Trust. The land on the other side of the roundabout but that goes up to the bike path, that the trustees actually bought. So that's owned by Look Park trustees and not by the city. So that's the only other exception of that piece. Okay. Okay. Um. So the first step that, um, so this is really just um, work in progress. We haven't had, had a chance to do a ton of this, but we sort of decided to do the um, farm scores river um, first, mm -hmm. and then tackle the URA maps. I am still working on trying to get the data about the lot size and unit counts in neighborhoods for each of those URA. Um, areas that you um, um, thought were appropriate to convert to other zoning districts. Um, so that will come as sort of the second piece. So those are all the red outlines. Right. So the change, the, the wording change here is for the yellow areas that would join the green areas. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. The yellow areas are going to turn green, as it were. Right. right. That's correct. So it would be the change would address would be um, apply to the green and the yellow. Can you just so maybe in the biggest ones here? We got Childs Park. What are the other big yellow areas? So this so let's start on the southern part or along Route 10. Was <coughs> in, is an area that we when did that close, Wayne? That's a yeah, a few a couple months ago. Okay, so new uh, that's a new acquisition for the city with in partnership with um, Arcadia. So oh. we've been doing this every couple of years is as we buy land for conservation, we've been rezoning those to farms for us and river. So that's been sort of routine. Mm -hmm. um, so that that one in the upper right, and I'm trying to steal Carolyn's thunder, yeah. where you see all that yellow, those are similar. Those are all parcels we've purchased recently. Those look like they were all farm field kinds of things given their shape. Uh, when the city, I don't know the history well enough of the city, but I gather when the city was first settled, you might own a house downtown and a woodlot up here. <laughs> yeah, I think it was required, wasn't it? I think so. Aha. Uh -huh. 
Interesting. Where are those off of? In the upper right, and I'm just having a hard time. Uh, Coles Meadow Road and, and oh, uh, okay. North Farms Road. Yeah. And back this back land, you can just see. Just way it's back in there, yeah. yeah. And then, um, going, then the other big one is Look Park. Oh, that one's that that one's Child's Park. This little one. Oh, that is yeah. Child Care. I was yeah. confused. Okay, that's true. <coughs> I'm sorry that I missed. I told Deb and something that's wrong. Although well, maybe we don't want to do it this way. <coughs> there is a conservation restriction on this on this map that's owned by uh, Lathrop Community, the back part of Lathrop. Mm -hmm. um, and, this is and I can't remember if we were supposed to do that or not. Yes. But that, that's nonprofit, obviously. <coughs> um, and so then there's Look Park, and then the other parcels are um, sort of on the western end of the city are parcels that were, again, purchased over the last couple of years. Um, it's rural, per, rural sure. pieces. Right, back land. They right. didn't have any frontage that um, were. Um, so really, the only one that we're kind of worried about here, it sounds like, is Child's Park. Well, Child's Park, and, yeah, yeah. And pretty I, much I, because I, yeah. the, you know we've got a recreation field. Our <coughs> field is, is shown up on here on, off of Bridge Road, but um, you know that's an Article 97 property anyway, so that's never going to. And I think, as I understand, Child's Park, there's some. Right Huge restrictions that mm -hmm. this the board can just above. I mean, they can barely do anything this up there. South I understand Street. it from, from the deed, from the deed or from the I, will of whoever I, gave the. I think that's right, unless they went that's to probate, and I have no so idea how. Somewhere. I don't. I'm, this isn't my area. I have no idea if going to probate is really hard. Mm -hmm. easy. But right. they'd have to go to probate to change to probate court to change it. Wayne, what's the little green triangle to the <laughs> southeast of Child's Park? And so is any of this different? Little tiny green. No. Oh, yeah. That's actually a tiny conservation it's area. Uh, Mary Brown's it? Dingle. <laughs> what is it? Mary <laughs> Brown's Dingle is a tiny conservation area. It's important only because of all the flooding we have on State Street. That holds back some of the water. So it's off of the homes on um, uh, <coughs> Soyot Street and then on the other side, uh, Crescent Street. It's like okay. a tiny little piece in between. Huh. Um, it has a tiny bit of frontage on, Glen, on <coughs> Glendale Road, it was called. No, it's the dump. Yeah. It There's another road that begins the Glen. Okay. It's off a of prospect. Yeah. Everything else is only in people's yeah. backyard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Carolyn, um, is this yellow piece out uh, Route 9, is that the Smith Oak property? That long, narrow? This no. Uh, it's the old oh. Girl Scout property. That's a oh, that's the Girl Actually, Scout yeah, the we bought. Smith, right, okay. The Smith Vogue property is just south of that. Right. It's not um, because uh, I don't know how here. that came in. Yeah. The, the one, so the, the yellow Scout. one is the Girl Scout <coughs> property. property. Okay. okay. Isn't that up where you live or something? Yes, yeah, actually my yard, yeah, like right. next we're at that little tiny corner. <laughs> So the, the only one that's bothered by the idea of a category of farms, forest, and rivers for parcels that are neither farms nor forests. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> it seems crazy. But it's the restriction, right? Not so much the title. It's how what you well, can or can't do on the property. Yeah. Well, maybe we should change it. Maybe it should be farms, forests, rivers, and recreation. Because the idea is or park or whatever. Right. I mean, because that's part so of it. So confusing and misleading. Right. Yeah. You're right. That might be a good idea. Because part of the motivation is the is the reverse. Is that if you look at the city, you think, oh, there's all this land that could be developed, and it really can't, can't be. be. Right. So, but you're right. Maybe it should be farms, forests, rivers, and parks. Doesn't quite roll off the tongue the same way. But <laughs> You missed it when we looked at FFR and not a one of us knew what it meant. <laughs> yeah, we could all get two out of our feet. <laughs> all right, so you want us to look at the name. <laughs> well, and fine. you know what? I c you could take forest out of there. Farming, could, you could, you farm trees. You, I mean, if you're looking for another three-letter acronym, take the forest out and call it FRP. Of course, then FRP. Alaska Park, is that going to confuse things? And we have other parks that might not fall into this. Or yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to be under Article 97, too. <clears throat> the original vision for the zoning district was to also zone some land that we really think it should always be protected. But that's a big deal, to take someone's private property and rezone it. So we haven't gone there. We may or may not do that someday in the future. At this point, it's really just to reflect land that's already protected. Right. Was that? 
draconian comes mm -hmm. to mind. But that's interesting. I mean, maybe we should put um, Pulaski Park under there, so it's not zoned central business. Sure. Uh, yeah, it seems like you would. We definitely have to add park to well, the name. You're not. You're not. I mean, <coughs> we've sp spent so much CPA money on it. It's. It's not. I mean, I, it can't go. It, Right, no, but the what whole idea <laughs> is to say, well, why is it zoned in a business right. as a yes. business right. why zone is it space? Yeah. if it's yeah. never, ever going to be? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Pulaski Park, just making the scenario up, could somebody come in, private owner, put in <coughs> a giant concession stand and then, you know, lease it to the city or have some arrangements so where it's privately owned and, and for profit, but it, it meets the criteria of a community center, a concession stand, or something, but it's not what anyone wants downtown after all this effort is being done, how, how would you avoid a scenario like that? Or do we need to avoid a scenario like that? So whatever that is, is going to be allowed under any zoning. We allow municipal uses anywhere. So if the city wanted to do a hot dog stand, whether, you know, like the local parks concession thing. Right. Whatever the zoning district is, it would be allowed, so the zoning would sort of be irrelevant. Okay. Um, as Devin said, this property was protected with CPA, because of CPA, so it would take a lot of staff. It was considered a conversion, it would be almost impossible. It was considered not a conversion of a park land. <coughs> it would be possible with a vote from city council and, this, and parks commission. But also, I mean, inevitably, the park, there'll be concessionaires at some point on the, in the park. You know, if there's an event, someone's going to set up a table and sell. Stuff. Setting up a table to sell brownies is, and my, I'm just an, I'm an income the stream for the senior center is more like yeah. what yeah. we might be worried about. Yeah. yeah, I'm just worried about not protecting the areas that we're trying to protect from from development that we don't want to see. Yeah, I mean, I think in that case. It's a city-owned um, parcel, and given the comment that went into the design of the park, my guess is that anything that would change would generate lots of public comment to city council, to the mayor's office. So it would be vetted that way, yeah. as opposed to needing a planning board permit. It's really more about a decision, a community decision about how we should lease out our property. Well, I, I mean, I, I think when you're thinking about making zoning changes, it's these kind of what if questions that we're supposed to ask. You know, what, what would happen if so? You know, that, that's our job is to try to look around the corner and say, you know, what, it, it, it's easy to get the intended use. It's the unintended right. outcome that right. we're trying to capture. I mean, everything you said, Carolyn, right there, I agree with 100%, but that to me is a special permit conversation. You know, is this the right use for this? parcel and so forth and if you could so is is the community supposed to vet a proposed development at Child's Park or Look Park or Pulaski Park and all these or Mary's something dingle or whatever so you know, so. so Child's Park's in a separate world because it's nonprofit all the rest the zoning really would make no difference because it would all be allowed now okay. I, I think as a practical matter if you asked for zoning which would be much more restrictive those things, I don't think it would be approved. I mean, if we went to mayor or the local park board, mm -hmm. they would strongly oppose if they couldn't do a concession stand. Right. So to some extent, the zoning is neutral about <coughs> doing it better doesn't make it worse. The, your discussion on Child's Park is interesting because that's mm -hmm. not cities who doesn't have some of those exemptions. Mm -hmm. So, but, but converting Child's Park to a park, which makes sense, um, we're certainly not making it any worse than it is now. I'm just wondering, I, at the same time, I just don't want to open a door for some unintended consequence. Well, I think your, your solution before the special permit is legitimate. Um, whether it's for all uses or for non-municipal uses, I guess is the other discussion. Anyway, if we're really mostly felt worried with that one. Yeah, I mean, I just looking at the language, you know, uh, municipal or community facility, recreation and conservation facilities, those can mean a lot of different things. And so, and a, a developer could stretch the meaning of, of, you know, a community facility, for example. And so how would you prevent just staying then on Child's Park? Would you just say, you know, over 2,000 square feet instead of 
site plan requires special permit for well, you could, construction or something. You could break this into two, so you could have one bullet municipal or community facility recreation and conservation facilities owned by a government and all the ancillary uses is mm -hmm. by right. And then under special permit you could have um, you know, uh, community facilities, recreation, conservation facilities owned by a nonprofit, and ancillary uses are special permit. That's good by me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good alternative. Mm -hmm. Three summers I painted all those white rocks when you walk around Child's Park. <laughs> You did. <laughs> Do they pay you or is that graffiti? Oh. <laughs> Three summers, what are you crazy? <laughs> and I was. You ask why? I could see one summer. But that, I, there are a lot less, we call them the bullets. There are a lot less there now than there used to be. They used to, be, they used to line you know, all the, the driveways, but they were a pain to weed around or mow around, whatever. So over the years, they, they took them out. But. It was myself, and then the next youngest person, I think, was 76. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is a big gap. And I was 16, and the next guy. Uh, <laughs> it's a great story. It took you that long to get around to all yeah, of them? Yeah, start, no, <laughs> we did little chunks, and then we delivered little chunks uh -huh. the next year. And we did nothing fast at Child's Park, because everybody was late 76. 70, <laughs> So you were the only child. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. right, right. So I feel like every time this comes back before us, we have to almost start over. And if we've got a really busy May, and you know, it'll be a couple of months before we see this again. But I think we're at in agreement with what to do with the yellow now by dividing mm -hmm. it into municipal and uh -huh. um, special permit for Nonprofit. nonprofits. So remind us of that when we get it back again. Okay. <laughs> We've already talked about this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, otherwise, it makes sense. All the yellow goes green. Yeah. And then we're now all diagrammatically, when you look at the map, <laughs> as far as developable <laughs> land you can develop, you can see. Is there any? Um, is there any question that we <clears throat> want to put before Carolyn to think about the URA and URB changes? I mean, I, I you think. You guys already closed that yeah, door, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there, done that. All right. <laughs> do you want to do the bicycle bed plan? Yeah. Defer to Wayne's schedule for the night? Sure. Other than doing six A&Rs and making you wait? <laughs> we just have three. <laughs> Poor Ann's heard this already. <laughs> I'm going to take one and pass it along. Copies now? Yeah. So I, I think I briefed you on this before, so I just very quickly, um, when we did the sustainable North Hampton, when we did the uh, Star Communities Assessment of Sustainable North Hampton, when we start thinking about revising the plan for next time around, we identified two big weaknesses. The, la the section on bike head isn't as strong as it could be, and the section on climate adaptation isn't as strong as it could be. So our focus has really been working on those two sections so we get back to the comp plan with the work on it. We received um, four separate grants um, to let us do this walk bike North Hampton comprehensive plan. Um, and so we hired Alta for the majority of it and Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for a part of it. It includes a few different phases. It includes sort of looking at the complete streets policy that you endorsed and city council adopted, looking at the subdivision regs, um, looking generally at trying to think about what the future of Main Street should be. Um, you know, could we drop a lane? How, you know, how would that work programmatically? Um, and then city, looking citywide and making recommend, sort of general recommendations like what should crosswalk, what should sidewalk, and then specifically what projects are really important to be done out there. So they're moving forward. We had the first four, you know, some of you are at a month ago, yeah. more or less. Um, we have two forms coming up. So these two things, unfortunately, are the same color, so they look the same. But the first page is we have 
form on May 10th in this room, which we hope we're not going to have too many people since it's smaller, um, that's just focused on Main Street. So we had Nelson Nygaard five years ago look at Main Street and say we, we could make it work if we dropped a lane. Also, is the next phase, and the, their job is to say, okay, how do we want to use that real estate? If we freed up, say, 50, if we had one lane each direction we dropped, but had turn pockets, so it, was, so it you know, cars moved clearly, mm -hmm. um, how do we use that extra 15 feet? Because you can imagine, we need wider sidewalks in places. We want more street trees. We want bike lanes. We want center islands. We want more parking. We want all these things that are really exciting and add up to a lot more than 15 feet. <coughs> so Alta is supposed to help us with the programmatic piece. And then in October and November of this year, we're hiring an engineer to actually start redesigning all of Main Street. We want to do the programmatic piece first. So that forms May 10th. We'd love you all to come. May 18th at First Churches uh, in the sanctuary there is the second public forum in the whole process. So their Alta will come back and say, here's what we heard. Here's what we're thinking. What do you think? Get additional comment on that process. We have an, two things that are online right now, a, a wiki maps. You know what Wikipedia is? You know, sort of a, a crowdsourced encyclopedia. This is, in essence, a wiki map. It's a crowdsourced map. So they have a map of the city. You can say, I walk here. It's safe or it's lousy. I bicycle here. It's safe or it's lousy. And then we have a public comments on the website as well. You can add your comment. You can comment on other people's comments. So that's what the May 18th thing is. And then the next five pages is really, it's back to back, um, is really sort of in their initial recommendations for bike network improvements, pedestrian network improvements, citywide, there's a zoom in for Florence, then for downtown. This went to the bike head committee on Tuesday, um, with, which Ann represents you all on. So there's a lot of comments from bike head that's not reflected on here yet. Yeah, one did it No, I, I used it from sitting. Yeah. So this is sort of, if you have off-the-cuff comments, by all means, make them now. But if you have time, sort of when you go home and think about it and say this place, you know, think about both in your personal hat, where do you travel, feels unsafe, either in bicycle or in foot, and then in your hat here of where have you issued a permit to something which, which highlights something. Um, question, is there any tie between this and the Nelson Bygard or whatever the name was five, from four or five years ago? Or yeah. So, so two big ties to it. One is they're taking as a given that, that it's technically possible to drop a lane through downtown. Mm -hmm. Whether it's desirable or not, it's a separate thing, but it's technically possible. And um, the second just general is the Nelson Bygard informed this. So it's one of the things that they read as their, their homework assignment and okay. reflect on it. Okay. Um, likewise, we just did a Main Street, or Mass DOT paid for, um, a, a project done by Tool Design, who's like the main competitor of Result, another really good firm, to do an assessment just of Main Street. You know, where are the safety issues, what are the opportunities? And so they're reading that as part of their process. Okay. So if it's useful to go page by page, we can do that, but we don't have to. I'm fine if you just want to email later. So whatever is your, your pleasure. Uh, can you like general take downtown Northampton? Yeah. Are there are there are there general things that they that came up as part of this review that um, they ended up targeting more often than not? You know, uh, right. improve right. sidewalk, they add bump outs, turnarounds, whatever it might be. Yeah, you just got the main parts. <laughs> <laughs> um, certainly add bump outs to make it easier to cross streets, to narrow the streets. Mm -hmm. Main Street at this point, they're sort of skipping because it's going to have a bigger effort. Yep. And they've been looking at a lot of options for Main Street, from bump outs to wider curbs. to They, they really like pedestrian, middle islands, not necessarily the whole place, but maybe like where a crosswalk is. Mm -hmm. middle, so I, think about Main Street. We don't have a continuous island, but we have a couple of, of islands where crosswalks go, particularly right around here. Yeah. Um, so those and bump outs are the main ones. Sidewalks, wherever there's gaps in the sidewalks. So State Street, for example. It's the only, as far as I know, it's the only street <coughs> in town that has sidewalks only on one side of the street. Mm -hmm. um, so looking at that. But the rest are really sort of opportunities. So, you know, King Street, there's no surprise, but King Street, when it was redone 30 years ago, didn't have a single pedestrian phase, was very pedestrian friendly. We've retrofitted some over the years, but they're obviously making a lot of recommendations about that piece. Um, uh, they always are interested, and there's not that many of these, but places where a very short distance makes a big difference. So like 
Child's Park by the high school. There's a wonderful path. I'm looking at that. Where, where is that specifically? Yeah. So there's sort of a loop that goes around Child's Park, but right at the intersection of Woodlawn and Elm, there's like a gutter. Like I bicycle through that sometimes. And you go on this wide, 10-foot wide trail, and suddenly it narrows down to two feet. That's probably for drainage and not for pedestrians. They're saying, you know, make that a path there. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a couple places where we have turn lanes that aren't necessarily needed. So they're looking at the state hospital, for example, where the, the West Street was designed when we thought the south side would be a village with lots of uses at different times. Mm -hmm. And said so we have a single user who actually has less traffic. So we don't so need the turn lane. They, they're not focused on the turn lane per se, but as much as the turning radius there. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess the other one generally is think about getting on and off the bike path. So we, we're hoping to do this project on Pleasant Street, um, which might include cycle tracks and bike lanes. But when you get up to Holyoke Street, there's just not enough real estate. The only way to put a bike lane is to drop parked cars. And the reality is we need the parked cars to keep you know, the, the retail alive. There's enough room on Pleasant Street to do that? to have a South of Holyoke. From Holyoke to downtown, there's not enough room unless we drop parked cars. And okay. I said I would personally be opposed to that. Yeah. So they're actually looking at the opportunity of could we do what's called a bicycle boulevard, but slow down the speed of traffic on Hawley Street and Market Street um, and maybe State Street, or maybe um, North Street, so that you could say, OK, we don't have room for bike lanes, but go in one block, and we can make the road safer just by slowing down the speed of traffic. So you're talking about making Market or Holly Street even skinnier? Not necessarily skinnier. It's, it's often about slowing the speed of traffic. So thinking about, you know, Market Street has either one or two speed humps. You know, mm -hmm. think about speed humps to keep the traffic okay. there. But no, not, not physically narrowing the street. Um. I, I think it's interesting, and I, I, there's been so much talk about Main Street and the possibilities about Main Street, but mm -hmm. There just seem to be a lot of different, not necessarily joined uh, consensus about which possibilities are the ones that should be pursued on Main Street. Uh, I honestly feel like if money were no object that we know exactly what to do with Main Street. It wouldn't feel good to everyone who's lived with Main Street the way it's been for decades, but I think there's, there's tremendous improvement that can be done there. But it involves infrastructure and, and drainage and trees and... and that's why this is the start. I mean, we may be looking at some low-hanging fruit like closing Cracker Barrel Alley over here. Mm -hmm. But most of this is to set up for this $7 million reconstruction project that's going to take 10 years to happen be all state money, but it gets us down the path. Well, one thing that has happened, though, is now there's federal policy for complete streets. So the states are going to be judged about whether all their projects are following that. So that's a little push in the right direction. It was interesting. Phil Goff, who's the consultant from Alta, and I met with the, the new Northampton uh, DNA, mm -hmm. downtown uh, Northampton Association. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I was only able to be for the first half of the meeting. But I sort of would have thought there'd be more pushback because merchants are always worried about change, you know, in a, in a strict environment. And they were they were excited about the idea of, you know, how does it make it safer? Because people, I mean, obviously a lot of people cross the street, but it, it's a, it's a resistance. You know, it's a little bit harder to cross the street than go along the street. So. So your real point tonight is to explain to us what is going on with this and to get our attention on the meetings. Yeah, well, on the meetings, but, but you get your own, per I mean, if you send the email, I mean, I love you to come to the meetings, but if you send an email about these things, it will get the same weight as if you show up at the meeting and set it. So whatever, whatever format works for you. Meetings are fun because you hear what everybody else says, and you will ultimately be approving this plan as part of the comp plan, so I want you to feel part of that process. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm actually running my own pedestrian safety meeting in D.C. on the 10th. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, but my pet peeve is State Street because that's the way you get to the bike path if you're in the dense area down here, and I find that to be a very unpleasant but they're problem. very aware of that. And, you know, and a lot of comment was made by people about getting, you know. When, one of the things that he, from, um, it, one of the things he threw out as sort of a test is would we be interested in Center Street being one, in State Street being one way? I, he asked me up front, was it okay to say? And I said, well, I'm personally resistant. I've proven it to me. 
but it's fine to test it. We also talked about could you just use Gothic Street as another bike boulevard? You know, so come up State Street from the bike path up to, is that Bright that cuts over to Gothic? Yeah. You know, come up State Street up to Bright and then mm -hmm. Bright to Gothic and, and then take the same thing, not narrowing it, but making it slow enough that, you know. I'd be interested in talking about a bike boulevard there because that's what's happening. People are riding on the sidewalk because they're scared of the traffic. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and you know, but, but I saw one of these in, in um, Albuquerque recently at Bike Boulevard, and their sign was speed limit 18 miles an hour, which I think was just to catch your attention. But part of the reason that 18 miles or 20 miles an hour is magical is that whole thing of if you get hit by a car above 25, you're probably going to die. If you get hit below 20, it's not a nice experience, but you're probably going to live. Right. Those numbers don't work when you're our age. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> one miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> 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 There's a lot on those maps, so you should really look at them and put the pieces together at, um, and the insert, particularly the Florence insert, there's a, a lot of ideas in there. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, I think that's very useful. There are, there were a lot, at the last meeting, there were a lot of additions too, so it would be even more complicated the next time you would look at it. <laughs> um, are people using your wiki maps? A hundred people so far have responded. I haven't looked, so I don't know what their comments have been, if they're all the same thing, but yeah. But they, but they got comments from other sources than that, from the meetings and everything else as well. Any uh, exposure numbers hopeful to come anytime? I mean, like, you know, we're not just anecdotally said, Oh, the bicyclists ride on the sidewalk on State Street. Any, will any of this generate some, exp in, you know, metrics of exposure? Um, we don't have, they don't, they're not doing a, a formal counting program. Part of this. The same grant that's paying for this is letting us buy two permanent counting stations on the bike path. They're not going to be installed in time for this, but one's going to be on basically the bike path bridge in Main Street, and one location will be determined in Florence. Um, so we're going to count bikes and peds, which direction they're going, and what kind of, you know, whether they're bikes or peds. So that's sort of part of the process. Okay. I was part of something that right. was doing that. Right. So not part of this, but so but they, some we of those data. data are right, going right. to, yeah. So um, as part of this grant, again, that's paying for it, um, we got PVPC sort of help plan these counts, and did one of them, I forgot which station you had. Um, so we have individual counts on, it was basically on the Pleasant Street project, the Mass Works. So we did Pleasant Street, Holly Street, one count on Main Street, which interestingly was, was about 20 times the traffic of Pleasant and 20 times the traffic of anything in, in uh, Springfield. <laughs> uh, pet, 20 times the pet traffic. So we have these individual pe mm -hmm. places. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons we're doing these things on the bike path is um, you know, we had Mass DOT has some permanent counting stations, and Mass DOT and PVPC in the city do individual counts around the city. So we have some pretty good sense of traffic counts. And even just personally, I can go out to the street, and I, I've been doing this long enough, I could give a sense of how many cars per day there are. I have no idea what the equivalent is for pedestrians or for, for bike path. Right. So we're just trying to have some basic counts so we can start comparing. For your vehicle traffic, do they break out trucks through downtown? When they do count, I, the last one was like six years ago, seven years ago. I'd love to see those two compared. Uh, it, even in my short time here, it, it has increased a lot. I can't, I can't, I don't know whether they're avoiding the circle at Look Park. I can't figure out why they want to come through town. Yeah, interesting. Well, it's be bad for us because the, the intersection, the improvement of Route 10, 66, and 9, we're looking at tightening up the intersections. But that would make it harder for trucks, and that only is going to be allowed by Mass DOT if we're below a certain percentage of truck traffic. So uh, there's not a light that I'm in, uh, you know, a stoplight downtown at, ma at the main intersection that I don't see a truck go through. Okay. We're away from DOT. <laughs> <laughs> okay. you? I, I applaud who you've got doing the work. I mean, that's yeah, this is interesting. They're really, mm -hmm. they're really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, between Nelson Nygaard and Alta and Tool, that's that's just we'll as good as it yeah. gets. <laughs> yeah. So I have three A and Rs. There's just one on the agenda. The other two snuck in <laughs> before the meeting. Wait, so, there's only one on the agenda? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
There's only one on the agenda? That, uh, what do you mean snuck in? Well, John's I couldn't have anticipated. John wants uh, to go here. Yeah, though. really, I know. <laughs> okay, I'll be quick. Well, Since this one... was posted for us to consider them, do you? No, because we couldn't reasonably have known that this would have come before the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, especially when they come in at 4 o'clock right. in the afternoon <laughs> on Thursday. So, um, this is this... Polish Church, St. Valentine's on King Street. Um, it is uh, at the corner of King and Edward Square. So it goes back into Edward Square. It's that little um, uh, square street, actually. Um, so the church wants to carve off the parcel. The, there's a rectory behind the, I think that's what you call it, mm -hmm. behind the church. And they're carving it off. In the, into its own lot because they're going to sell it as a separate thing. Mm -hmm. So I'll King that, Street is here, yeah. and across the street is what Dunkin' Donuts or pretty close to yeah. that. Um, oh, no, there. that's not quite that far. I think Dunkin' yeah, it's, Donuts. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's like near the seal. And the other church is just like down two yeah. lots just down. Just yeah. Oh, okay. So there's no. Um, it's central business. There's no. Um, Minimum lot size or anything. I mean, there's there's not going to be anything new here because it's just dividing two buildings. That's onto their still own central lots. business. I thought central business stopped at like Trumbull Road. No, so it got rezoned. Um, yeah, I thought that was like transitional or whatever we called it. Entrance business starts entrance. right at the intersection of okay. North Street, okay. so it goes up to North okay. Street right there. When Any problems? We, when we dealt with the changes to the church on this side. This side. Same this again? side. Yeah. Oh wait. King Street, yeah, this side, you're right. These, these were. Yeah, I thought the parking lot was half central business, half. Right at the time, but the zoning came out. Okay, that. okay. Any issues? Okay. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. And second. It all in favor. Okay. The next one is the next two you've already seen in permits, so it's really just the actual A and R to create what you all approve as a permit. So this was um, this Pat Melnick came in for to carve off that lot here, of that mm -hmm. large lot on Chesterfield Road. So this is the um, A and R that creates the lots or the flag lot anyway, um, plus the new lot that we want to create. So we're approving. And something that's approval not required for something that we've already approved. Exactly. Would you like to make that Sounds motion? Sounds like a safe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd like to review. <laughs> Mark made the motion and John seconded it. All in favor? Okay. The third one, I left the plans upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Just trust me. Uh, I'll take your word. You, can, you right here. can you draw us a picture on the chalkboard? Yeah. <laughs> But it wouldn't be accurate because it's not surveyed. <laughs> this is the one that you just reviewed. Um, it's the corner of Hatfield and Bridge Road. So the oh, four, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, it was going to be two singles and two uh, two families. Where are we? I can't think of the one on where. Yeah, it was going to go from four to six. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. They turned two, two into four. Across from the nursing home. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So um, this is, again, an A&R to show. The lines, you saw when you approved it, lines, but they were tweaking them a little bit because they converted two of the singles to, so it's going to be four, two families instead of two of each. Right. right. So the lines are changing a little bit. This also has the easement um, lines for the circular driveway, the one-way loop right. that'll mm -hmm. go on there. So um, it come in as you expected it. Yes. And made the motion. Bill seconded. All in favor. Okay, that's it. That I have. Move to adjourn. <laughs> John. Second. Second by Anne. I don't have to be hit by it. All in favor. All right. So Carolyn, what you're telling us is that this is our last. No. It,